So welcome back to the channel. And uh, you can see in the car, got all the gear in the back. And uh, the plan was to go uh, west towards Port and fish another mark in Port Harbour. But it's quite windy, it's, it's sort, of five, sort of five, it's gusting six. And my, my gut feeling is it ain't really the conditions to be going to this other mark. Even though it's in a harbour, it's a big harbour and it can cut, cut up a bit of a chop to be fair. And the target species is flounder. So it wasn't really the conditions. Probably good conditions for bass, but not for flounder really, to be fair. So I decided to, I'm going to travel east. Head towards Chichester and beyond, going to Shoreham. Now, they've been having some decent flounders already by lots of things down there. I was going to leave it a little bit later in the uh, season, sort of thing, for flounders, and go next year in 2024. But, as I said, it's windy, change of plan, the wind will be on my back when I go to uh, Shoreham, so it should be a lot more comfortable fishing, a lot more sheltered waters, and a lot more chance of a flounder. So that is the plan, but we're going 80 style, we're going 80 style flounder fishing, which I show you the rig a bit later on, and we're going to do one rig with a free hook flapper, and one rig 80 styles fishing. Now for you that are old enough, you may remember these, or well, this rig and, and what I'm going to show you a bit later on. And uh, a bit of the rage back in the late 80s to have these things, flounder fishing, certainly with my mates we used to go fishing. Um, yeah, so, and they were expensive, well, they were fairly expensive back then, to be fair. And, and uh, you didn't want to lose them, that's for sure. And if you did lose them, you waited until low tide to go out and get them. And you probably think, what's he on about? I'll show you later on. Anyway, take care for now. And uh, we're going to get down this uh, A27, get to our mark, and get out fishing. Well, we're at uh, Shoreham now. So um, let's show you that 80s rig. And I was using it, and a load of my buddies were back in 87, 88, somewhere around that. Um, Used to fish a place called Moran's Way uh, in Portsmouth, in Langston Harbour it was actually. And this is the rig we use and it probably looks crazy now but that's what we were using and it's one of them. Right, who's old enough to remember one of them? And what, could, and what was it called? Anyone remember? And if you don't know what it is, and you can't remember what it's called, it's called a bait safe. Um, and pretty much it's a coffin for the worm, really. So the way it works is the normal sort of setup, really, is oh, I'm using 70 pound asso line. I'm using one snood hook. I've got 20 pound asso line. Sorry, 20 pound amnesia line, even. And I'm using the cox and rule scratch and match. So, this is how it works. You fly it out, it impacts there, the water as it goes in, and it flies that off, and out pops your bait. So it basically saves the bait on impact, is what it does. And then for retrieval, it's just a quickly wind it up, and up she pops and up and over, sort of thing. It's really good for getting uh, out of snaggy areas, sort of, Quick, sort of thing. It goes up and over, up onto the surface pretty quick once you get it going. Downside is they're around about five, six quid a go, and when you lose them, it is a pain because you don't want to lose it. And if I can retrieve it, I will. So there it is. So you literally pop your worm in, in like that, and we'll do that again. It's a bit windy here. Pop, pop that in. It's a little bit fiddly to start, plus it's not on the rig, which makes, on, sorry, on the rod, which makes it a bit difficult. Bait goes in there, you push that down like that, and you just slide it along like that, and there it is. So, we're gonna give it a go. Let's give it a go for old time's sake, for a bit of a fun, and see if it works or it don't work. And uh, I'm looking forward to using it. It brings back very good memories with my buddies, 
um, down on Warren's Way. And the fun we used to have, Kitchen Flounders. It was good fun, really good fun. But there we go, let's see, let's see if it works. Well, this is where we're fishing. Uh, there is a channel just there, and there's an embankment, and then there's another little channel beyond that. We are fishing just as those two channels meet. Hopefully, we will catch a fish or two. I can't see why not. There's been a few kept coming out of this neck of the woods, and hopefully we uh, we'll get a few out. Um, just got to be mindful around here, there is a lot of dog walkers, so you do get quite a few dogs hanging around sort of thing, and trying to sniff your bait and God knows what else, so you just got to be uh, mindful of that and, and, and try and keep your dogs at bay and uh, everyone's happy. There we go. Let's see what happens. So the right hand rod is the 80 style and the left hand rod is up to date. We're using a free hook flap on the left hand rod. Um, so yeah, let's see what happens. The challenge is on. 80s, old school through new school. What's going to work the best? Well, the wind's died off a little bit, which is quite nice. Um, there's not really much movement on the uh, tide by looking for things at the moment. But, and there ain't no fish either. So I'm going to have to, when you get to this mud, you're going to have to flick it up. Flick it up over the mud, otherwise everything gets dragged in mud. And at the moment, the baits are coming back as they pretty much went out, so that ain't great. Well, it's on its way to darkness and uh, I've got my tip lights on. I don't know if you can see that um, at all, the green green um, shark lights. And I'm just hoping it's going to start to happen, to be fair. The flood is well started now. I've gone for the fixed rig shack lights. Um, I've got fin tips and uh, the rig shark lights that activate when you get a bite. There's just too much movement on the moment on the uh, rod tips, so and they just keep flashing. So they've been rather annoying. Uh, so I've, I've made them fixed, which has made a lot of difference. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed. Let's see what happens. Well, I've just had my first bite on the right hand rod. Slack, slacking. It's going slack and then pulling. Let's see what happens. All right, let's see if anything comes of this. No, I don't feel like there's anything there. No, definitely not. I'm going to reel in, get baited back up. Well, AT's rig is on the first fish, and this fish is dinky. But it's a little flounder, and I mean it is little. Look at that. Let's just support it. What a beauty, a little flounder, absolutely lovely to see. I'm just going to unhook him in a minute. There we are, let's just unhook him now. Nicely look, lip hooked. I don't know if you can see that. 
a size six cocks and rule scratch and match but there we go oh let me have a look at that there there we go look at that <laughs> absolutely beautiful what a lovely thing to see a nice little flounder it's just on the palm of your hand beautiful isn't it there we go anyway let's get him back so 80 rigs one nil up all right not the biggest of flounders but it's a flounder It's done a lovely bite, a little like a bass though, but I think it's just down with it and soldered off basically. Nothing much has come of it. I'll just pull into it a little bit, see what happens. But yeah, lovely bite. But it definitely looked like a bass bite more than anything else. That's on the free hook flapper. No, it's not actually, is it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is on the free out flapper. Yeah. Shame. Looks like I've missed it. Looks like I missed that one. Put it down. Well, that bite I had, which I thought I missed, ended up being another fish. And there's me thinking it was a bass. It was another little flounder again. <laughs> look at that so there we are a little bit bigger but not much bigger this one but anyway there we go a little flounder there we are oh there we go just a little one but yeah i can't believe it it's got to give it a right count for itself to be fair on the old tip so that is 80s rig one and you score one well, another fish and another species. And it's on the 80s rig again, but not quite what I want. A little dinky eel. Go on, get it out. There we go. A little dinky eel. Absolutely spinning up. Horrible things. Let's get him away. But there we go. Another species. I've been getting quite a few little rattles here and there. And uh, maybe that's what it is. A few little eels sort of having a tug in the way at it. No doubt there's a few shoal bass out there, but I've not connected with any shoal bass yet. So uh, who knows, who knows. But it's now high tide and hopefully uh, we'll see a few more fish on the drop off and uh, see how it goes, eh? Let's see how it goes. So there we go, another reel. And this time it's on the free hook flapper. So that's a bit more of a different size of eel. But uh, that's what I reckon I've been getting a load of nibbly bites is the eels. The eels have taken it, but they're just not hooking. But anyway, let's get this away. Uh, before it destroys my trace. But yeah, there we go. I knew there was some bait robbing fish out there. And there they are, look. Little salt, little, well, a real dinky bass. You see the size of my fingers to the size of the fish. And I reckon there's loads of these little buggers out there sort of thing. So, uh, there we go. So that was on the uh, the 80s rig, and uh, still counts. Still a fish. So uh, there we are. Three species up: flounder, bass, and eels. And the tide's just made the turn. It's starting to go out. I'm just hoping that I might pick up a, another flounder just before the end end of the session. So uh, let's get this little beauty away, and we'll get back to fishing. Well, that's it, folks. We're going to call it now, end of the session. The rods are still out, but I'm going to reel them in. I'm not expecting too much to happen. But um, it's been an enjoyable evening. It's been all right. It's been all right. I've got the target uh, achieved, the old flounder. That's what I come for. They weren't very big, though. You know, the, the little dinky little things. But they're nice to see. They're, they're the new flounder coming through. And that makes me happy to see that there's a few flounders about, sort of thing. And there's been good reports of flounder down at Shoreham here. So um, it's all happy days for me. Um, so a couple of flounder, a couple of eels, and one small bass. Yeah, that's right, that's what I've got. Yep, remember now. Now, the 80s rig, it just tipped with that little small bass, I think. But um, 
you know, a little bit of fun there, just a little bit of fun. Just showed you what I was using back in the, what, around about 87, 88, somewhere around that sort of thing as a, a young sort of teen, really. Um, yeah, fond memories, that brings fond memories, as I said. And, uh, you know, we, you, no one uses those sort of things no more, as far as I'm aware, sort of thing. And to be honest with you, I probably won't use it. Well, not that I won't use it again, but I'm not going to use it often, that's for sure. But there we go. So, um, end of the session. Thank you very much. See you all very much soon. This is my last video for the year. Uh, it's been a great 2023, and I'm looking forward to 2024. Thank you very much to my subscribers and viewers and people on my Facebook follow me and, and Instagram that follow me. And... Also as well, I'll be at Boat Life in February 2024, uh, um, 15th to the 18th, I think it is, if I remember rightly. Uh, I'm going to be there throughout the whole uh, duration of Boat Life. There's lots there to do, lots there. There's not just boats, there's fish and stuff there. There's everything from big boats right down to kayaks. Um, so come along. Come and support Boat Life and hopefully see me and have a chat with me as well. I, you know, I do like to see my subscribers. If, if you're around, I do like to have a chat with you guys and girls. And, and it's all good. So, um, tight lines, everyone. See you soon.